Well guys, welcome back to my shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. Uh, got a project that I need to accomplish today and really the project's already been completed. But unfortunately, my video that I did on this has been deleted. So this is a after I've already done it video. Um, but it's regarding your um, power steering cylinder replacement on your Oliver Super 55 or 550. And um, I had originally uploaded the video in about four days on the internet. Um, I got online and it looked at that I had two videos that were the same. I deleted one of them and um, that ended up deleting both of them. And once I upload onto YouTube, I delete them out of my phone just because they take up so much space. So anyways, a lot of work went for nothing. So at this point, we're going to redo it because I just feel like it's way too valuable of information um, to not post on YouTube. And the reason I say that is because when I was looking for this information, it was very difficult to find. And I thankfully, there's guys on um, yesterday's tractors and other forums that really help you out. And, um, and those guys have been, uh, frankly, a godsend for me. They've been a great blessing because um, there's some very knowledgeable, knowledgeable men on there. But um, I'd read on the forums that you could replace these cylinders with a, uh, I think it's 63 to 82 um, Corvette uh, steering cylinders. And so I went online and, and ordered a couple of those. Uh, these I got from Jegs, but if you just plug in, there's a lot of different um, um, vendors out there that sell these same cylinders and essentially they are exactly like the ones that come on the Oliver 550 so let me bring it in and I'm going to explain to you exactly how I put these cylinders on and, and uh, the very slight modification that you need to do to the end. So this is the original cylinder that this tractor came with, and this is this, the one that I just replaced it with. So you can see they are essentially the exact same cylinder. Even got the grease fittings here on the end, got the nice ball and socket there. Uh, now the difference is, is if you look up here on the, um, I'll use my laser pointer so my hand's not in the way this shaft is extended. So they both have um, the same size shaft, okay? So these shafts are exactly the same size. Where it varies is right here. So this steps down to a 3 8 inch shaft, and that's a half inch shaft. So the problem that you get into is your tie rod end or your ball and socket end. This is a female uh, um segment here and it threads onto this male segment this is the one half inch by 20 thread so it's a half inch um, diameter with 20 threads per inch this is 3 8 inch by 24 threads per inch if i recall and so essentially um you know i had actually considered cutting it right here and just welding the end of this shaft onto this but that involves some welding and, you know, not that I can't do that. That's not a problem here in the shop, but you know, it, you, you involve some risk when you do that. You know, can I get that shaft perfectly welded onto there that nice and straight though, this would be very forgiving to be fair. Um, so I decided to see if I could find a coupling. So essentially that's what I did. I, I got on McMaster car. Um, probably McMasterCar.com. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, they sell a lot of different stuff. But hardware is something I buy quite a bit from them. And I bought this coupling. So this is a 3 8 inch by 24 female end coupling with a male end like this that is the exact same as this one, which is 1 half inch by 20. So 3 8 inch by 24, half inch by 20. And so that allows me to screw the old ball and socket or, or tie rod end onto this end of the coupling. And that allows me to screw the um, shaft from the new cylinder into the coupling. So very simple thing to do. Now, <clears throat> something that I would suggest you do, you see how I've got extra threads here. I would suggest 
that you, and I did tap the inside of this to get a little extra length inside because it's tapped probably, I don't know, three quarter of an inch or so. I tapped it another quarter inch to get it down here, basically trying to eliminate any thread showing. If it were me and I were doing it again, I'm not gonna undo mine because it's just no sense in doing that, but I probably have about a quarter of an inch of thread showing. If it were me, I would cut a quarter of an inch thread off the end of the shaft. And that way I could thread this all the way up to the point where I don't have any threads showing. Um, just because those are gonna wanna try to get rusty and that kind of thing when they're out in the weather. That's just me at, at being picky. So you don't have to be like me. You can, you can leave it alone. I am, to be fair, I'm leaving it alone. But if I were to do it in hindsight, I would definitely just snip the end of this about a quarter of an inch. And that way I would have threaded just a little bit deeper. Also an advantage to doing that. So the stroke on these, on, oh, I got a little oil still in that thing. The stroke on these cylinders is eight and a half, if I recall. And so one of the things that you have, there's a couple things you got to do. One, you want to be able to get, when, you're, when your wheels are straight, you want this cylinder to be in about the center of its stroke. So you, to find the center of the stroke is real simple. When it's not connected, you can just pull it out just like I do with this one here and you can measure it. So you can mark it here and then mark it on, see if I can, you know, there's still a lot of fluid in that and I'm making a mess on the floor so I won't do it, but anyways, Basically, you can, you can measure the, the cylinder rod and know exactly where the center of that rod is at. By doing that, when I have my wheel straight, I want the center of my rod to be right here. And the reason for that is as these cylinders turn right and left, it gives me full steer to the left and full steer to the right, both directions equally. So you do want to make sure that's in the center or, or close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the way to do that is right here. So right down here, I have a mark right where my laser pointer is pointing to. That mark is the original mark that I put there measuring from the center of that bolt to here. The service manual will tell you, you know, 18 something inches or something like that. I don't recall now what the, the service manual um, was, but Essentially, it says to put this bracket at that point right here, the front end of this bracket at that point right here, where you've measured from the center bolt to here. When you put the new ones in, you can clearly see that this has lengthened it. I've got to get this off. <clears throat> it's bugging me. So you can clearly see that this has lengthened this rod. So normally the rod would end right there. So we've lengthened that quite a bit because now this here would normally be threaded all the way down here. So that's about two inches, maybe an inch and three quarter that I've lengthened this. That means I've got to take that much off of this. So in my case, it was, it was probably around two inches. That looks about two inches to me. So that's important to understand. If I, if I take this bracket and I loosen it up and I put it back up here where the original was, then I'm going to have less steering on one side. And we don't want that, obviously. Actually, I'm going to have less steering on both sides because it's, both sides are going to be equally at a disadvantage because I've, I've shortened my stroke. So if it's going one direction, this, whatever cylinder, it's going to be, lim one cylinder is going to be limiting where, how far I can push. So anyways, I hope that makes sense. Um, again, when I did this originally, you got to actually see me do all of this and make the measurements, and but that video is gone, so no sense in crying about it. <clears throat> so that's something you have to take into account is that right there, but also on the new cylinders. So the old cylinder went like this, and you can see the old cylinder with, with your tie rod end down. You have your ports on the top, so the new cylinder has your, your ports on the bottom. Whereas the old cylinder has had them on the top. So you can see. Now, the way to determine that, if you look on the top of mine, you can see an I and an O. I know they're not very fancy. But if you pull that rod out and plunge it down, it'll put pressure on one side or the other. I'm sure yours aren't going to be any different than mine. 
So essentially what you'll have to do, because this cylinder is switched, it's upside down, you do have to take the rod that was on the inside and put it on the outside and vice versa. So I did have to reverse these, these lines on the new cylinder. Not a difficult thing to do at all, particularly since you've got the flexible line back in the back, but I did cross these. So normally this inside line here would go to the inside of the tractor. But as you can see, that inside line follows up here and goes to the outside of the cylinder instead of the inside now. And um, that's important to do because if you don't make that modification, then you're gonna have, um, you're gonna have issues, okay? And that's essentially, guys, it. Um, I bought this from McMaster Car. It is a stainless steel coupling. Again, 3 female end, 3 8 inch by 24, female thread inside, and then male thread on the end of this coupler. That is 1 half inch by 20 thread. And it's a stainless steel piece. I think it was around... Oh, I think it was around 12, 15 bucks or something like that. Maybe not quite that much. And then one other thing I wanted to show you guys on the Oliver that I did make a change on was my power steering pump. <clears throat> As you can see, I just, the old line came off of this and it, it, it was this same uh, rubber tube. This is low pressure side but it looped down here, had a little bit of a kink kind of right here where it had to, to kind of do a 180 degree bend back up to the top. And it really just didn't look very, um, it just wasn't a clean look to me. I've done a lot of work on the tractor and I, I'm trying to keep things clean and neat. And um, so that was something that just bothered me every time I looked at the tractor. To me, this is just a lot more um, professional it's rigid you know it's pretty rigid i use two brass these are just brass barbed fittings that you would use for like pex tubing so uh pretty simple um, to purchase at the hardware store <clears throat> but i did want to make sure i pointed that out you can see this other cylinder exactly the same on the other side again there's our coupling ties in with the uh, tie rod at the end. Everything worked out real nice and clean and neat. I did choose not to paint the um, cylinders, the new cylinders. I, I kind of like the contrast of having black and green and, and different colors in the engine. It makes it makes me feel like I'm not sloppy. Like if someone looks at the tractor, they'll go, oh, he took the time to take things off and, and paint things separately versus just, coating everything in green, wires green, tubes green. You know, Again, that's why I left the tubes, you know, metal color. I think I clear coated those tubes. So I, I just prefer a tractor um, like that. Look, it has that look, I guess. Anyways, <clears throat> that's the power steering cylinder replacement. I apologize again, guys, for not getting this entire thing on video and uploaded and, and everything like I'd originally had but I don't want to take this whole apparatus apart again and do, redo that video. It was literally like a, a day long video that I condensed down to, you know, 30 minutes or so. So anyways, I, I hope this is a help to you guys. Uh, I'll try to put um, a lot of the information in the um, description so that um, you'll know what year and that kind of thing, as well as the coupling information. I'll try to put it, I won't put links because I don't really know how to do all that. That's probably just a little beyond me. But <clears throat> anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks.